ladies and gentlemen good day and welcome to orum proptech limited earnings conference call as a reminder all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes i now hand the conference over to ms sonia thank you and over to you ma'am Good evening everyone and a warm welcome to the quarter 1 FY 2425 financial results presentation of Aurum Proptech Limited. We appreciate your continued interest and support. Joining us today is Mr Ashish Deora, the founder and CEO of Aurum Ventures, Mr Onkar Shetty, executive director, Mr Kunal Karan, a chief financial officer, and Mr Hiren Ladwa, EVP Investments. Before we dive into the details I would like to remind everyone that the forward looking statements we may discuss are subject to risk and uncertainties kindly refer slide number 2 of investor presentation for detailed disclaimer I would like to hand over the call to Mr Rashish Deora for his opening remarks over to you sir Thank you Sonia Good evening everyone and thank you for joining us today It is my privilege to welcome you to this 13th earnings call of Forum Proptech. I am thrilled to discuss our latest financial results and share the progress we have made over the past quarter. Let me start with profitability. At Forum, we have always focused on unit economics, path to profitability, and value creation. We have been articulating these thoughts through our various communications over the last two years. we are starting to see the benefits of our disciplined approach across the ecosystem that we have created quarter 1 of the of this year has validated our disciplined efforts in the past quarter we have seen all round improvement in performance ratios across our businesses compared to the financial ratios of last year this quarter delivered improved pbt improved ebitda and improved adjusted ebitda by 13% 8% and 10% respectively as we remain extremely focused on costs and run our business businesses with a frugal mindset we also need to continuously grow and increase our market share i will now touch upon how we are endeavoring to achieve these we have often discussed with all our stakeholders how large and untapped the residential rental opportunity is Hello World and Nestaway are showcasing our growing market presence and the effectiveness of our strategies in this space. We believe that we are the leading player in the rental vertical and will continue to dominate this space. We aim to replicate our success of rental vertical across our entire ecosystem. Real estate housing sector has seen record breaking transactions over the past few quarters. and our services in form of orum analytica and seldo do enjoy a commendable trust of the developer community in enabling them to reach to the prospective home buyers both these businesses have delivered their best results in q1 fy 2025 we are now working on a few strategic initiatives to reorganize and lead the real estate sector in the distribution vertical as well over the next few quarters At Orum, we strive to grow exponentially, but always in a sensible manner. Moving on from numbers, tech is at the heart of our mission. We have made substantial advancements in our platform, integrating AI and machine learning to provide smarter and more efficient solutions for our clients. As the real estate sector across India continues to get organized, the need of tech, especially data analytics. marketing and sales automation will be getting stronger our road map is designed to build on emerging trends and ensure that we remain at the forefront of top tech industry our challenge is to maintain similar efficiency that we that we demonstrated in the last quarter over the next three quarters this will enable us to deliver stellar performances in fy 2025 and improve all round financial matrix on a year on year basis i believe we are learning this balance to trade off between growth and profitability and we are improving every single day i am confident that with our dedicated team innovative solutions and strategic vision 
we are well positioned to set bolder targets and continue to achieve our ambitious goals. I want to reiterate my gratitude for your trust and support. Together, we are building a future where tech and real estate converge sim seamlessly to create smarter and more sustainable ecosystems. Thank you very much, and I look forward to your questions. Over to my colleague, Omkar. Thank you, Mr. Deva. The rental business comprising of student living, co-living, and family rentals manages 30,000 rental units across 17 cities in India. This quarter, we had 6 lakh tenants searching for rental properties, 90,000 prospective tenants under management, and rupees 70 crore rental payments managed on our platforms. We have a major revamp of our rental discovery portal, Nestaway. We are aiming to create a better user experience for searching and booking rental properties. We have also spruced up our recommendation engine with AI-enabled matchmaking features. For co-living units, we have continued the strategic supply acquisition in high demand areas. To maximize revenue during off-season periods, we are also piloting short stay as a flexible and convenience format for tenants. With a continued focus on providing right value, right location, and right property for rental consumers, we are aiming to reach 50,000 units under management as our first, first pit stop, followed by 1 lakh units under management. We will keep up the momentum to build the India rental real estate opportunity, an opportunity to solution about 2 crore individuals and households to be serviced with tech-enabled renting and living experience. Our distribution business that includes data analytics, marketing, and sales automation continue to increase enterprise efficiency for real estate developers. This quarter, we had 80,000 buyers actively looking for home purchase at Auto Manalitra. More than 7,500 SaaS licenses were deployed across 180 projects in the country, providing marketing and sales automation to real estate developers. We also facilitated INR 40 crore worth home sales with our broker aggregation offering. Our data analytics business grew 30% year on year, signed up 100 new projects, and commenced operations in new locations including Ahmedabad, Hyderabad, and Lucknow. Our marketing and sales automation business achieved a key milestone of reaching PVT positive this quarter. With this, our distribution business have, has now turned profitable across all offerings. This is a segment where real estate developers spend 4,000 crore worth of expenditure on marketing and sales automation, a segment that also presents to us a large opportunity for tech late disruption. The capital segment has engaged further with regulators and commenced on to the SM rate application. We believe that there is an immense potential in this business with close to 33 million square feet office space with over USD 48 billion value available for SM REIT segment. I will now further hand over to my colleague for financial updates. Thank you, Onkar. Thank you, everyone, for taking out time to join us on this call today. The Board of Directors approved the annotated results for the quarter ended June 30, 2024, and I will take you through the headline results. The total income for the quarter was 69.10 crore as compared to 47.71 crore in Q1 FY 2024, up by 45% year on year. EBITDA for quarter 1 FY 2025 was 12.05 crore as compared to 1.80 crore in Q1 FY 2024, marking an improvement of 6.7 times year on year. Adjusted EBITDA loss was rupees 4 crores for this quarter compared to a loss of 11.77 crores in Q1 FY 2024 a year ago. This demonstrated an approximate 1900 BPS improvement in the adjusted EBITDA to total income ratio. Profit before tax improved approximately 2000 BPS year on year, standing at negative 13.74 crores as compared to negative 18.79 crores in Q1 FY 2024. Now with this, I will pass on the call to Michelle to open the floor for the question and answer session. Over to you. Thank you very much, sir. 
We will now begin the question and answer session. To ask a question, please click on the raise hand icon tab available on your toolbar or on the Q&A tab available on your screen. You can also post your text questions on the Q&A tab. Kindly turn on your mic when the operator announces your name. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We have the first question from Vikul Arora from Shadow. Please go ahead. Thank you, everyone, for your time. Uh, so my question over here is, uh, despite being uh, we are improving from RAS model, like real estate at service from uh, 52, 58 crores, but sir, I want to ask, but the SAS is, uh, it's bit down for this quarter, like from 8.8 .8 crore to uh, it's close to five to uh, six crore. Uh, is there any issue that we are facing in terms of SaaS model? Mr. Arora, thank you for this question. Uh, a quick, uh, a quick uh, uh, idea on uh, both the models. Well, RAS presents largely transaction-led, uh, tech-enabled uh, businesses. SaaS presents pure uh, tech deployment. Uh, what we have done is, as a part of a certain restructuring, we have uh, we have gone on to uh, build transaction platforms on our SaaS uh, technology platform. So, uh, a couple of examples. For the cases, you know, we have built a broker aggregation platform on top of the uh, SaaS business or, or the or, or the or the marketing and sales uh, automation uh, tech stack that enabled us uh, get a larger value in terms of uh, revenue, which is demonstrated in the RAS business. Uh, there is definitely a certain uh, headwind that we faced in quarter one this year for the uh, SaaS business, uh, owing to, uh, I would say, uh, certain, uh, uh, certain, certain uh, election-led uh, 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 expenditure by real estate developer segment. Uh, we look at increasing this uh, in the for, uh, for the quarter and uh, uh, SaaS business will continue to demonstrate uh, a substantial uh, I would say value if not revenue going further uh, in, in the ecosystem. So basically it's a temporary one. Sorry I didn't I didn't get the yeah. 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 yeah yeah temporary yeah so my second question is uh, can, could you please uh, turn or uh, throw some light over sectional ownership uh, if you can, please. We didn't get your question. Could you please repeat this? Yes, uh, sir. I was asking, can you please throw some light over uh, the fractional ownership that uh, mm -hmm. earlier the Aurum is working on? The fractional so, uh, ownership. Yeah, this is Hiren here. I, have, I, I hope I'm audible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir you're audible. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you know, we have uh, over the last couple of years looked very intently at this particular space uh, much before the regulation has come in, right? Uh, as you are aware, uh, uh, we actually uh, uh, kind of uh, took up the tech platform of an erstwhile player and onboarded the entire team who has been working with us to build that platform in the name of Aurum Visex, right? Thanks to the uh, regulation which uh, or the notification which started last year and has now come out as a regulation uh, dated 8th March. We have started preparing for the uh, the license application as we speak. Uh, we have been in consultation with uh, legal advisors uh, uh, who are helping us in kind of the process to file the application form for that, right? So the first uh, uh, step in that is to procure the license. Uh, and then migrate the existing set of uh, assets that we have, which are roughly around 400 investors uh, who have uh, uh, who have a roughly uh, AUM of 180 crores with us, right? So that's uh, that's those are those would be the two first uh, and foremost steps as far as we are concerned. 
uh, given the ASMR uh, notification that has come. Uh, in terms of how the market will pan out, uh, mostly we remain positive uh, uh, in terms of you know how the market is going to grow thanks to the regulation. Uh, uh, the initial one or two years might have some uh, you know unknowns in the form of how the distribution of these assets happen. Uh, uh, if you are aware, uh, before the regulation came in, all the fractional ownership uh, platforms had their own distribution engines in terms of sales teams, digital platforms, etc. But the paradigm now has to change uh, completely uh, with the introduction of a merchant banker coming in between. Uh, 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 on the positive side, in fact, uh, there are uh, many positives to take. Uh, the, the, the biggest one of them being that all these investments will become more liquid uh, thanks to uh, all the units being listed on uh, stock exchanges like NSC and BSC, right? So overall there is positive, there are a few unknowns, uh, but uh, we are taking the entire approach step by step, which is to first apply for the license, uh, then plan for migration, and in parallel launch uh, appropriate and lucrative uh, prof uh, properties that can be fractionalized. All right, sir. Thank you so much for your elaborative question answer. Thank you. Thank you. We have a next text question from Vinay Gupta from Previse Wealth. And the question is, can you please explain the adjusted EBITDA calculation? Yeah, this is here. I'll, I'll again take up that question. If we can refer to the slide which, uh, which we have presented. Right. So, uh, uh, you know, broadly, uh, as you might be aware, uh, we have uh, been following the INDAS uh, standard of reporting uh, financial statements, uh, and and uh, uh, we, by nature of uh, our business, predominantly the co-living business, we have uh, certain properties which are taken on long lease. Right, and as per the standards, uh, we report them, we capitalize them, and then there are n number of costs which we have to report in the entries. Now, what happens is uh, 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 both for our own internal tracking as well as uh, investors like you would want to understand how operationally we are, uh, uh, you know, uh, performing, how we are improving. Right, it makes sense for us to start tracking first internally. Uh, how the the operational EBITDA in the erstwhile domain work. Right? So and hence we kind of created our own dashboard saying that if this is the reported number and if I adjust for the lease related costs first, right? What would be my operational EBITDA looking like? Right? So and we uh, we we benchmark this approach with a number of uh, listed companies, uh, not just in India but outside India also who. Uh, where the similar index, uh, uh, similar standards to similar to index 116 specifically have come into place. Right? So we, we took learning from them and uh, we, we we thought uh, now that we understand how this uh, uh, the the adjusted EBITDA calculations work, we thought uh, let us also for the benefit of our investors uh, transparently share this so that they are also able to appreciate uh, given that we have a lease related business in the form of uh, co-living. Uh, so we are able to appreciate the operating margins, right? So we have put up a table which is there in the investor presentation, right? Which helps you to, uh, you know, kind of uh, uh, match the entire PNL with how we look at adjusted EBITDA, right? So for example, there are, uh, there is an entry in the, uh, in the income category, which, uh, which is on account of the index standards. And these are, refer to as right of usage assets, right? So, so there is an other income. So we first, uh, you know, adjust the total income for that uh, entry. Also, if you look at the costs, uh, you know, uh, typically the finance cost and the depreciation cost is where some of this in that 116 related entries come in, right? So we kind of, we balance for that uh, from the EBITDA that you would have seen from the financial statements, right? So that, uh, you know, if you look at the table, uh, there is a uh, line item says which says less lease cost on INDAS lease assets. Right? So that's a 35 crore number for FI23, 71 for FI24, and 17.8 for 
uh, 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 Q1, uh, uh, Q1 F525, right? So we we kind of adjust that for uh, from the EBITDA that you would see from the financial statements, uh, and whatever comes as a result is the adjusted EBITDA as we call it. So this, in our mind, is is the erstwhile operational EBITDA, uh, which is after the uh, the 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 recurring uh, cost on the leases that we have, right? So that's that's how we uh, are tracking our operational performance as well, right? Uh, there is also another item which is a one-time item uh, uh, in the form of uh, ESOP ex expenditure. So we uh, we have adjusted for that as well because we don't see this as a recurring uh, or big expenditure coming into our PNL for for long. And it's and more so it's not a cash expenditure, right? So uh, these are the two main adjustments we have done. Uh, this is more for our own first to track our own operational performance, and secondly for the benefit of our uh, uh, stakeholders and investor community to understand how the uh, business is going operationally. To add to what uh, Hiran just said, uh, this is Ashish here. We are we are also sort of uh, learning this uh, uh, in a much sharper manner. And I think uh, this quarter we felt that uh, our uh, our one learning and second uh, looking at how the subsequent quarters are going to be it will be good to kind of give this kind of uh, adjusted debit numbers and this will be the same policy that will continue uh, for some time to come without any without changing this that was the idea. Thank you, sir. We'll take the next text question from Virendra Chava from Aurum. And the question is, when will be the final call PP shares? So, so we have just uh, uh, done completed uh, uh, one call of uh, 30 rupees. So the shares are now 20 plus 30 paid, by, paid up by 50 rupees. Um, there will be another call of uh, uh, 30 rupees uh, that we are planning to do uh, in the Q4 of FY of this year. So uh, probably next six to nine months. That is the current uh, requirement. But, you know, uh, we can always do it later or earlier. But uh, the fact is that the company doesn't require uh, require this uh, these monies uh, uh, until then. And in our experiences, we saw that uh, when we did the last call, which was for uh, around 130 crores, we got 123 crores uh, of that within the prescribed window. And the seven crores that we have not received is is uh, because some people were traveling and things like that. So um, I, the we we don't have uh, we don't need this capital now, but we as of now feel that we will, we intend to call the 30 rupees in the Q4 of uh, this year. Uh, sir, Mr. Virendra Chava is also available on the audio. I'll just promote him. Mr. Chava, can you please proceed? Yeah, thank you. So just want to check uh, apart from this question. Uh, just want to see how aggressive we are in the sales pro and the marketing. Because when we see online or news, nowhere we are seeing is like advertisement related to our next way or any other products. So just want to check how aggressively we are uh, moving in this re uh, real estate and the rental business. Thank you, uh, Mr. Virendra Chava, for the follow-up question. Uh, just to give you a quick sense, from a operational standpoint, we do have a, a substantial effort going into uh, marketing and sales where close to uh, uh, close to around uh, 300 odd uh, individuals uh, or, or, or colleagues are deployed in the marketing and sales effort. Uh, our uh, marketing is more on the targeted side uh, where we use a lot of data analytics to reach out uh, to the uh, consumers directly digitally. And uh, that is where we uh, go on to acquire the consumers uh, more smartly and more uh, more uh, uh, from a direct standpoint. Uh, additionally, Nestaway uh, in the recent uh, quarter has done substantial rebranding effort. Uh, we have started the rebranding effort and initiative in Bangalore. 
where uh, we we went on to relaunch the Nestaway brand after uh, uh, after uh, post acquisition. This was the first rebranding effort that we went on to, uh, and we we did substantial amount of billboards. We substantial we did a substantial amount, amount of uh, direct targeting, uh, and that has started paying us uh, a good amount of traction in the total uh, uh, total uptick in uh, tenants coming and visiting Nestaway properties. Uh, we will start launching the brand activities city by city once we get control of a certain uh, location and go on to extend our marketing efforts. One thing that we would definitely want to sort of uh, underline here, uh, Nestaway as a brand uh, pre-acquisition had already spent around 450 odd crores on branding and marketing where uh, Nestaway as a uh, rental marketplace was established uh, in the market. Uh, and it does remain uh, in the top five uh, rental uh, prop tech brands in the country, and definitely in one of the uh, largest rental marketplace brand in the country. Uh, in the country. Our efforts are, uh, I would say, focused more on the uh, recalibration of this brand and uh, bettering the consumer experience of uh, uh, renting and booking properties on Nestle. Yes, thank you. Thank you. We'll take the next text question. I'm sorry. We'll take the next question from Pranav Mashruwala from Dollar Capital. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah, hi. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Please proceed. Yeah, hi. Uh, yeah, thanks for taking the question. Uh, just wanted the uh, breakup uh, of our revenues, please, uh, for Hello World, Yesterday, uh, and uh, uh, other segments. Thank you. Thank you, Pranav, for the uh, question. Uh, so our our uh, revenue breakup remains consistent between these three cohorts. Uh, we are we have got close to 60% of our revenue from the rental cohort, and uh, uh, that comprises of Nestaway, that comprises of Hello World uh, business. In terms of quantum, uh, the uh, the revenue will consistently remain at around 60% going uh, into the for the uh, quarters. The second largest cohort for us in terms of revenue and operations is the distribution cohort, where uh, we have garnered close to uh, 30, 35% uh, of the revenue. And this comprises of our data analytics business, this comprises of our marketing and sales automation business. The third cohort, which is uh, the, uh, the capital cohort, which is uh, uh, still, uh, you know, uh, uh, getting to the scale that we would want ideally to reach, uh, is contributing close to a 5 to Okay, thank you. Uh, just one question on uh, one of the news articles I had come across. Uh, this was regarding Hello World and uh, one of our key markets that is Kota in Hello World. So uh, I believe the NEET exam uh, cancellation and because of that uh, and the deferment, uh, there has been an uh, impact on demand uh, for hostels and in maybe to that extent, uh, co-living segments. So do we expect any impact uh, uh, on that for a second? Uh, sure, Pranav, this is Hiren here. Uh, you're right, I think uh, uh, specific to the, the city of Kota, uh, there is a mild impact uh, uh, given, the, given the couple of uh, trends that you mentioned. Uh, Having said that, does it have an impact on the overall student living? We are not seeing that as yet. Uh, one, because there is going to be a continuum. Yes, there is going to be a delay in the demand. Uh, but we remain positive that uh, you know uh, the, the enrollments will happen. Uh, we remain positive that there will be fresh batch of students coming, maybe delayed by a month or so. Uh, uh, yes, that delays our revenue planning to some extent. Having said that, our dependency on the student living is, and that too within Hello World, is less than uh, roughly maybe 25 or percent of the overall revenue, right? So there is also professional, young professional uh, working in the co-living segment, right? That's also a... Right? To add to uh, Mr. Hirin, uh, 
uh, quickly uh, just to give you a scale of the student housing uh, uh, segment in India or higher education in urban areas in the country uh, of which 80 lakh students are non domicile students meaning students who are migrating to a non domicile city uh, for uh, 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 for studying and of that 60 lakh students live in uh, non captive or non campus uh, rental housing uh, typically in pg and rented housing and this is the larger cohort that we are addressing to uh, top cities by demand is bangalore pune chennai kota and ncr so the uh, the neat specific challenge that we are facing uh, that that the industry is facing right now is limited to only that cohort of students uh, where the opportunity size still still remains large thank you so much thank you we'll take the next text question from vamshi k from click ventures and the question is what would be the target ebitda margin for fy25 Uh, you go to the uh, slide, please. So, um, Amshi, I think uh, the way the way we look at this, uh, and I tried to address it in my in my uh, uh, early uh, uh, discussion as well, um, that we have uh, improved EBITDA, improved adjusted EBITDA, and improved PBT. Which, if you can see the slide, is visible in the slide as well. Um, our idea is that if we are able to uh, able to retain the similar similar sort of ratios for the for the next three quarters, uh, then then we would have uh, uh, then we would have exceeded our internal expectations, and that is what we are targeting. That is what we are kind of uh, uh, aiming at. Without uh, without giving you uh, more than what I can, I can give you this indication for sure. Thank you, sir. We'll take the next question from Faisal Hawa from Edg Hawa and Company. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, can you just give an idea as to what are the key resource areas of the top management of Nest Away at this point of time? How you have determined their salaries and uh, you know compensations? So uh, at Nestle, uh, or not just Nestle, but with respect to the entire uh, leadership team that uh, runs our businesses, we have done four segmentations of their compensation. The first segmentation is, of course, the basic thing that in a way takes care of their uh, remuneration. The second is linked uh, is a variable pay, uh, which is linked to the AOP or the annual operating plan, uh, and then the third and fourth cohort is uh, a time linked and a value linked, uh, 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 I would say, uh, remuneration. Uh, the time linked remuneration is given in form of ESOPs at Orem Proctech that vest in uh, four uh, years over the course of four years that ties them to the business and then also in a way. Make sure that they are also operating in co uh, in in concurrence with the Proctec ecosystem, delivering uh, consorted results. The value linked, uh, I would say, uh, 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 for for a lack of a better word, a remuneration is linked to the ESOPs that they carry at the uh, individual business that they are running, uh, which is uh, which is in the in the ESOP cohort, which uh, links them that to the value that they can create at the business they are running for. So, with these four uh, levers of remuneration, we are able to, in a way, uh, uh, make sure that their, uh, make sure that their, uh, uh, I would say, energies are focused uh, on delivering value and also our uh, consolidated uh, targets for profit. Our founders move uh, also directly into uh, into the payroll uh, at, uh, at at Nestle. So, if we if we specifically talk about the Nestle. Uh, uh, leadership team, they are getting compensated directly from the Nestle business. Uh, uh, in fact, both the founders uh, uh, 
uh, uh, co-founders uh, uh, Jitendra Jagdeva and Ismail Khan. Uh, both are running the uh, Nestlé and Hello World business combined together from the Nestlé period. So, uh, uh, without naming the competitors, you know there are one or two competitors which are now going big on advertising, and we did notice that in the World Cup also. Uh, and you know this could cause us to probably up our spending also. So, within your board of directors, what is the thinking? Do we want to do such a thing and burn cash and you know? Uh, uh, really upset our uh, gr uh, growing the EBITDA plans, or uh, will we will we not do that? So marketing uh, and advertising expenditure is a, a segment where we don't like to compete when there's a uh, there's there's a competition for expenditure uh, uh, for two reasons. One is that uh, if if a competitor is spending on lead gen. Uh, why do we region? Why do we have to sort of spend on brand and marketing for region? We would rather do a, a, a lead purchase from that platform and then make sure that our CAC is under control. Uh, the second uh, uh, reason for this is that uh, our data analytics team and practice is very strong in doing targeted marketing. So we do. We are not required to do. I would say a carpet bombing exercise for our advertising expenditures. Uh, like a uh, like a competitor would do, our uh, advertisements directly reach to our consumers on the platform that they are uh, used to and conveniently looking for. So, uh, for example, a late millennial consumer will be targeted on his uh, Times of India app, uh, and a Gen Z uh, consumer will be targeted on its uh, Instagram Instagram uh, handle, and that is how we uh, do it: targeted delivery through our analytics uh, platform. I think I just to add to what Mumkar uh, just said. Also, um, as as a philosophy, we believe more in the product than in in promotion. So, if you see most of our initiatives, they are product centric and not promotion centric. Having said that, uh, we all understand that uh, running digital B two B products, B two C products require their own marketing capacities and sales and marketing uh, costs, which we which we incur. But it will always be lesser than our competition as a percentage. And Anirji, if you could, you know, see, give us, you know, a glimpse into the future, like five, six years down the line. How do you think the value will be finally created for the shareholder? You feel that all these companies will finally be demerged when they are of, you know, uh, good size, and uh, you know, or, or will we utilize cash flows from these customers, uh, from these companies to, you know, further beef up the companies which are needing the cash? Uh, like you know, the, the model that probably you know uh, Warren Buffett or you know even the Prem Batsa have. Uh, I mean, uh, because stock market does get confused in companies, you know, where, where there are too many subsidiaries. So you are right, and we are cognizant of that for sure. Um, as a direction, I can tell you that um, we are we are moving towards one thousand uh, crore revenue. Two, doing it profitably. Three, integrating it with uh, data uh, coming from various businesses, uh, creating a DAS platform, data as a service platform for our own internal requirements, so that all data is in one place. Um, and uh, you will, over next couple quarters, see that uh, how some of the other businesses are getting restructured to to. To one, uh, to one, have better business efficiencies, and hopefully that will also turn into value creation for the stock market, uh, as you as you said. Um, having said that, um, as of now, the focus is to uh, quarter on quarter improve the financial metrics and uh, and increase the revenue. Uh, that trade-off itself is pretty challenging because, as you know, that if we kind of want to continue continue to grow. In a in a market where everybody else is losing uh, money, it becomes a bit of a challenge. But I think we are dealing with that uh, well. Uh, we want to continue to focus on that. So you mean to say that there, there could be some value creation uh, in the next two to three quarters itself, in 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 one or two of the companies? Well, we are. Look, we we do understand the value creation aspect, right? Not not from a stock market point of view per se could be, but we do understand. And uh, uh, in our real estate business, we did uh, 
uh, we did uh, create value by uh, selling uh, two buildings uh, to Capital Land in last two or three years, and uh, because that new because that happened over the weekend, and that news is in uh, public domain today, I can talk about it. Uh, we did we did uh, uh, monetize our buildings uh, worth thousand crores from from uh, Capital Land. Right, that has happened in the real estate side. Doesn't directly impact property. So as a company, as as uh, as management, we do understand the value creation piece, and I think we, we not directional level, we are we are there. That is it. Thank you, sir. Just two compliments uh, while leaving. Uh, this new uh, the way that uh, this uh, con call has been done with uh, you know with the presentations and all is a very good uh, step and. Uh, Second is that you know this is only probably the third or the fourth time that you know a CEO has uh, revealed the KRAs of uh, you know his top management you know at absolutely the first uh, you know question itself and without you know any kind of uh, trying to say yes or no about it. So uh, good going you know because you know you have basically empowered your people to you know, answer to each and every question that investors have. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We'll take the next question from Ramesh Shah. This would be a text question, and he's an independent investor. And the question is: We see that the company has began capitalizing the product development costs. Can you throw more light on what we are capitalizing? Thank you, Ramesh, for the question. This is Hiranya. Let me uh, let me try to answer that. Uh, see, as you know, we are a you know prop tech company. All our businesses are run at the back of certain tech products. Uh, or Onkar has already thrown light on you know what we are building. Some of the software, some of them are software, some of them are platforms, uh, some of them are customer facing or investor portals. All these products and platforms have a long-term economic impact, right? So, which is in the form of either revenue or also in the form of uh, efficiency improvements. I believe the logic and merit of capitalizing such cost is well understood, and hence I will not delve into that uh, per se. Uh, at Aram PropTech, uh, you know, we had seen we, had, we were actually in an acquisition uh, mode till the beginning of FY24, uh, and then. And, and for every company, we used to spend a couple of quarters to onboard them uh, uh, after the closure has been done. And, and and when they were in their own nascent forms, right? So the product development efforts were far more experimental in nature uh, than they are as of now. In the all these businesses are far more mature in terms of their market business. And then as part of our onboarding process itself, and later on uh, in FI24, as part of our uh, three years strategy planning also. Right? We began to assess and plan for our consolidated product and tech capabilities. So we documented and started tracking our product roadmaps. And by the way, all these efforts also uh, added or had the added benefit of helping us to drive uh, cost optimization in this bucket. So expectedly, you know, there were several products from the you know the uh, these uh, the the invested companies or the businesses, right? Uh, uh, that that have uh, have a long term top line or a bottom line impact on our P and And so we have capitalized some of these uh, uh, products, and we have actually also listed some of these products in our investor presentation. So I'll I'll encourage you to have a look at those. Uh, now we already had a capitalization policy, right? And uh, and we. You know, we had we we have been capitalizing some of our costs that were uh, uh, from the products that were getting built uh, in house under Aram PropTech itself, right? Uh, now in FI24, after we did this entire consolidation, the the strategy planning and the product roadmap planning, etc. Uh, so we we started capitalizing some of these costs uh, uh, from from the partner companies, right? So uh, we created a bottom up list of all these products. We put on the criteria from the policy, which which is like you know what are which products are technically feasible, uh, what are the costs which are identifiable, measurable, and also you know attributable to this particular project or products, and also which 
definitely have a defined you know economic value or an economic impact over the uh, future quarters and years right uh, more importantly years so from a numbers point of view uh, in in q1 fi25 we capitalized uh, around 2.8 crores uh, which is roughly half of the expenditure that we incur on on our tech teams uh, right and 3% of the overall uh, overall expenditure uh, like to like in q in, in the entire fi24 we had capitalized somewhere close to 13 crores against our uh, which was i think 4% of our uh, total expenditure so uh, and then on an average this product should be depreciated over next 2 to 3 years right that's that's the plan uh, i'll also like to add that generally we while we were doing this uh, exercise uh, we were also benchmarking ourselves in terms of our cost structure with uh, with with uh, tech companies in a similar scale and there there also we observe uh, that most of these companies have around 35 to uh, 45% of their tech expenditure uh, uh going towards product development uh, there is a you know uh, depending on the maturity again 15 to 20% of the expenditure going towards r&d uh, and the remaining is is you know upgrade upgrades maintenance and miscellaneous right so i think if uh, we were you know quite, quite content to realize that at this stage our uh, breakup of the expenditure is also more or less aligned with the benchmarks of the best in class companies that we see thank you we have a text question from gunit singh from counter cyclical pms and the question is he needs to know the outlook for fy25 in terms of top line so uh, we will give you a quick sense of how we have moved in the last uh, uh, financial year uh, from a revenue standpoint uh, we've grown 68% uh, uh between fy23 and fy24 uh, this quarter our year on year growth has been uh, at a, a 47% uh, and uh, we have targeted uh, ourselves to grow at a 45% uh, year on year revenue uh, going in the next 3 years uh, the north star for us is to reach a 1000 crore revenue goal uh sooner the better faster the uh, better uh, and we'll keep our efforts on to it however our uh, eyes are also always on profitability and we have always pushed our teams to make sure that there's a balanced approach uh, with respect to revenue growth and profitability uh, and uh, that is that is how we are uh, sort of commencing on to our future journey in terms of business expansion thank you the next text question is from aditya sen from robo capital and the question is can you please throw some light on how the revenue and ebitda will shape up in fy25 and fy26 thank you we just covered uh, this question uh, mr sen uh, we've given a outlook of uh, our guidance of 45% yoy growth Uh, for in terms of revenue, and in our last uh, uh, in our last quarter call, we have also uh, highlighted that we would like to keep an eye on profitability, uh, ensuring that we are improving our EBITDA by uh, 450 BPS uh, uh, quarter on quarter. Just to add to what Omkar is saying, uh, it's the trade-off again between the revenue growth and uh, discipline in uh, profitability. that that is a discussion on a on a on a regular basis uh, uh, at our end and we are happy to kind of uh, discuss this in the next quarter we call this thank you the next question is from rahul jain from dollar capital please go ahead yeah hi uh, hope my line line is audible Yes, sir. Your your audible, please proceed. Yeah, thanks. Uh, you know, firstly, I would uh, like to appreciate the clarity shared on the adjusted EBITDA working and the reconciliation table, because I think sharing adjusted EBITDA that reflects a lower EBITDA number than reported EBITDA is an industry first initiative. 
most of the time adjusted EBITDA is used to reflect that the EBITDA is better than the reported EBITDA. So I think I appreciate the courage behind sharing that. Um, my uh, question would be like, uh, since you gave some idea on potential call for the last tranche on partly paid in later part of the year, it would be great if you could share that, you know, is this going toward the expanding into current business lines or is it going toward uh, newer areas as well, which we are not addressing today? Now, this is Ashish here. First of all, thank you for uh, releasing uh, uh, a report uh, from your firm uh, in this uh, in this uh, uh, quarter. And uh, so we are, uh, at Aurum, we are, we are thankful and grateful to you. Um, your question is, uh, your question is, uh, around the use of the, of the, uh, uh of the, uh, investor, uh, use of the rights proceeds. Is that right? Yeah. And also towards, uh, you know, the potential call which you are about to make, uh, will it be in the same line of businesses or potential new areas? So I think with our ecosystem, we have more or less covered uh, all the key value aspects of the real estate value chain. So uh, all this, um, all the capital, the existing or the new capital will will go through, go to deepen the ecosystem rather than uh, trying to create new uh, new businesses around that. Um, I think uh, I think the three three clusters that we have more or less covers the entire real estate value chain uh, that we like to be present in. So uh, these uh, these uh, these funds, the existing and the and the funds that we raise through rights issue, will uh, continue to deepen the ecosystem rather than any new business lines around that. Understood. And also, uh, could you share the current occupancy on the 30,000 30, odd units that we have on the rental side and also an ideal timeline to achieve the first milestone for 50k units? So, uh, I got your first question. The second one I didn't get, uh, which is milestone for? Yeah, so the 50,000 unit milestone that we mentioned, uh, is there a timeline that we have in our mind? So at the moment, uh, from a capacity point of view, we are already at around 30,000, uh, uh, which is signed up capacity. And uh, uh, from an occupancy point of view, uh, in the co-living, we are at 77% uh, uh, of, of the units that are there on our platform. Uh, it's, it's 77 to 80% is where it keeps on hovering. Uh, and then when we track our competition, we are doing far more better because we have heard is that uh, 60 65% is the average for the rest. So, uh, so 77 to 80% is what roughly we have seen over the last two, three months, uh, two, three quarters rather. And uh, from a 50,000 uh, um, goal point of view, I think we are a little ahead of our plans. Uh, we had aimed to receive, uh, reach 50,000 units capacity by uh, March of 2027 actually, right? But we have we are ahead much earlier than the plan that uh, that we have set for ourselves. Sure. Also, sure. also okay. if we also to add to what Hiran is saying, if we take a view that look, uh, we are putting some growth capital behind uh, Hello World and Nest Away in a more aggressive manner, then we can reach this 50,000 bed uh, in a in in a much faster manner. But that kind of uh, uh, that kind of uh, uh, takes the unit economics of those particular buildings for a little bit of uh, uh, longer to kind of make, uh, get the ROI in, the, in those. So we take it, we take it when we hit an inflection point and then we add capacities. That's typically what we have, we have been doing. Sure, sure. I think that's quite helpful and that's it for now. Thank you. We'll take the next text question from Pranav Mashruwala from Dollar Capital. And the question is, uh, would 450 BPS improvement in EBITDA would be in adjusted EBITDA terms? Yeah, so this is Hiren here. Uh, you know, as we have shared uh, the table for the last uh, 
uh, uh, two years as well as the current quarter, you can see the improvement uh, uh, both in terms of EBITDA as well as existed EBITDA. Uh, we believe that we will continue to have uh, uh, you know improvements uh, in uh, operational performance altogether. Right? Because that's where we start tracking our. I'm sorry, sir, your audio broke. Ladies and gentlemen, kindly stay connected. Uh, sir, your audio broke. Can you please repeat your last line? Yeah, so I I kept on speaking, but I'll just uh, quickly summarize. So, yes, we expect the, uh, the improvement in the EBITDA or the adjusted EBITDA more or less in the same more or less in the same uh, uh, quantum as we have seen and it's also demonstrated by the past performance uh, as, as we have shown in the investor presentation right uh, and the reason for this is mainly because the impact or the delta between the EBITDA and the adjusted EBITDA is primarily on account of the, uh, uh, the, the, the lease related expenditure which for us is limited uh, to the uh, to the co-living business and uh, you know, it will be governed by the uh, similar group, right? So, it could be 50, uh, 50 or, you know, so basis points here and there, but more or less should be in line. And now we are starting to track this for last couple quarters only. We see a direct correlation, as you can see, to add to what Hiren has said, that EBITDA uh, on total income has gone up by 8%, um, 8, 800 BPS, and uh, similarly, adjusted EBITDA has gone up uh, 1,000 bits uh, if you look at uh, uh, from last year to this quarter. So we see a direct correlation in that. Uh, we are we are also tracking it very closely now uh, since we have uh, learned to kind of uh, do this. And um, we see we we can safely say that it will be 450 bits will be transferred to the adjusted EBITDA as well, a uh, plus minus 50 bits as uh, Hiren said. Thank you. The next text question is from Pyle Shah, an individual investor. And the question is, how is the journey from a software Medrisco company to a property tech company? Is it more lucrative than software business? I will request Omkar, I will request Kunal, Kunal to take this because Kunal was uh, in Majesco and now 12 years in uh, Orem, first in Majesco and then Orem. So I like Kunal to, Kunal to take this. So look, uh, honestly, this the, though both of them are tech companies, but the uh, basic nature of the technology is totally different, and the market is also totally different. Like Majesco, it was more a uh, uh, overseas market, mostly in US, where <coughs> insurance are very, very uh, matured product, and um, but. Uh, this prop tech, it, currently we are mostly in India and uh, though we want to venture out of the country, maybe it will take another two years for us to reach that stage. But definitely it is more lucrative because the competition over there was much higher because uh, US is always a very technically matured uh, country to operate and we definitely uh, have that advantage in now uh, as a prop tech because it is a very new thing. So we are uh, very early to enter and we hope that we can take that benefit at Orem uh, as the prop tech journey continues. Also, uh, just to add to it, uh, from like to like comparison, uh, the India insurance market uh, by 2030 is uh, to be a 250 odd billion dollar market, whereas the real estate as a market is uh, poised to be a trillion dollar market, of which prop tech will be at 100 billion. If we see insure tech, uh, the market is largely contested. It's a mature uh, a space with uh, uh, a diamond dozen players uh, wanting to attract the same time, uh, whereas prop tech presents a larger opportunity. Uh, where there's limited players who understand this space as well as us. And also it goes beyond just an enterprise business model that 
which is co used to run its earlier avatar uh, our business model covers not just enterprise tech in our distribution vertical but also consumer tech in form of our rental cohort uh, and that gives us a larger value creation piece uh, across the prop tech canvas so yes it is a better uh, uh, for us it is a better uh, and natural alignment uh, to to our existing uh, sort of uh, skill set thank you the next text question is from ruben matthews from equity intelligence and the question is great presentation the restructuring of business mentioned earlier in the call for creating value will it be in the distribution vertical also will we see segmental break up in the future as rental distribution and capital or will it continue to be ras and sas thank you mr matthews for the for the compliment on the presentation the restructuring of business that uh, we mentioned about uh, is uh, is uh, is targeted to be in the distribution vertical we believe that we are in a pole position we are in a pivotal position in rental uh, in rental space already uh, that has taken us uh, four to six quarters uh, Uh, to do that, and now we believe that we are ready to take the rental, uh, sorry, take the distribution vertical, uh, uh, and go deeper into that to to see uh, how we can improve our market share uh, in that. So that's that's definitely the idea. The the RAS and SAS has a is, as a term we have been using RAS and SAS uh, when we when we started. Um, Uh, when we started thinking about the real estate business, uh, sorry, the property business, uh, some of our presentations were around that. Then from there we we moved to start thinking the business from our tech, capital, and services, which uh, which I thought was our next level of uh, evolution. And now uh, we feel that if we look at the ecosystem and put it into different value aspects, different value chain, then. rental distribution and capital are the three segmental breakup which kind of maps us very well and makes us a unique uh, ecosystem thank you ladies and gentlemen we will take that as a last question for today i would now like to hand the conference over to ms sonia for closing comments over to you ma'am Thank you Michelle thank you everyone who participated today we truly appreciate your continued interest in Oram Proptech and we look forward to having you all in the next call again have a good good evening ahead thank you thank you members of the management ladies and gentlemen on behalf of Oram Proptech limited that concludes this conference thank you for your participation and you may exit the meeting now thank you